Hello everyone, this is Batgirl for another Let's Play, and this one is on a goodie, but an oldie. <laughs> I like to say oldie, but goodie, but I change things around every now and then. It's no shock that I am one of the biggest nerdy girls that you'll ever meet. I think it was 1977, I was 12 years old, my mom was working full-time, my dad was estranged, living in New York City, didn't see him much at the time, and my mom would have a pretty much daycare where she dropped my brother off during the school year and during the summer she would leave them home with myself my 14 15 year old brother and my well let's see if I was 12 that would make my other brother nine so it would almost be that my older brother would disappear and leave my youngest brother who was actually only at that point about two years old with me to pretty much feed him, take care of him, and, you know, as we were growing up, I took care of my brother, um, I'll leave his name out of this, for a long time. But one of the things that I would do is put him in the stroller and walk him to the nearest theater, which wasn't too far away, actually. It was uh, probably only a, about a 10-minute walk to the Fox Theater in, I guess it was Setauket, I guess, because I lived in Port Jefferson Station, so it had to be Setauket, and the Fox Theater was one of those old-style theaters that was one theater, um, and I remember Star Wars being there, and I'd just take him and we'd go see it. And we had fun. I, I must have seen Star Wars over 25 times in the first year it was out, sometimes seeing it for three times in one day. My older brother had a paper route, and as he got older and started to get into football, I wound up taking it over, so I always had my own money, and I was always spending it on my other brothers and pretty much stuff for the family, like milk and bread, helping out. And I remember all this. Well, let's fast forward. That was 1977. Just about 16 years later, was it? <laughs> 16 years. Oh my God. Was that right? Um, that was 77, 87, 93. Holy cow, that means I was 28? God, I wasn't that old. I feel like I was like 19 or 18. This game came out. It was X-Wing. And it's totally different in the way that Chris Roberts brought us Wing Commander, which was more of a space opera. It had this branching mission architecture where you didn't have to complete one mission to get to the next. You might get a harder mission the next time and have to think about ways to win that you didn't have so easily to do if you had won the previous mission, but you had different ways, different pathways to winning. Well, this is a linear game. Finish the mission or don't finish the mission. You'll repeat one over and over and over again. And there were times that I was very frustrated with the mission structure. But after a while, you figure out the puzzle and you get used to, well, you get used to going through it very quickly. The AI wasn't too great. It was mostly trying to finish things in time and trying to identify the targets that you had to kill first. All in all, though, I love this game and the other games that came out after it. X-Wing, TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and X-Wing Alliance, which is by far my favorite because you get to fly the Millennium Falcon. Anyway, so I'm gonna take you through this last play and I'm gonna cut to the chase. I just created a new user and there's a place to go over here, which is off to the upper left. And in the upper left, you're gonna have an area that you can go as a pilot proving ground. Let's go take a look at that real quick. So I tried to do this as commenting during the game, but so many F-bombs were dropped when I was trying to figure out how to actually manipulate the different systems on the ship. Yeah, something that's in Star Citizen but not easily gotten to, which are the, I guess it's the power systems management. You can't get there very easily, but that was here. And very quickly in this game, I realized I didn't know how to get there. And I'm hitting every button on the keyboard and it's just not working. And then something hit me. It's F9 and F10 because I played this game so much in my youth that I remembered exactly what to do after starting to play it for a little while. Also getting the joystick configured was a little bit weird. 
I have the Razer um, Nostromo, well, whatever they call it. I forget what it's called, but I use it for World of Tanks and some of my MMOs. And it sets itself up as Joystick 1, and this is something that I had an issue with Star Citizen. And I had to disconnect everything and plug in just my joystick so I can get this working. As you could see, moving the joystick left and right gives you yaw. It took me a few minutes to figure out that holding down the thumb button was actually going to give me roll. Um, and I'm passing a lot of targets over here, so I'm not getting a lot of points. Not only do you have to fly through the gates, but every so often you'll see turrets on the side that you'll have to take out. It's pretty... Uh, pretty phenomenally uh, hard after a while as you start going faster and faster and they start shooting back. Anyway, this is the gist of it. Does it remind you of anything? A tiny bit, right? A tiny bit like racing in Star Citizen. All right, so let's get out of here and let's jump into a mission because I think that's what this let's play is going to be about, going through the campaign. So here we are back in the new tour area, which was the upper right hand door. And we're just going to go through the new tour, the first mission or two. And of course, you get the Star Wars scrolling text and the music, which I have dulled down to a light roar, because I don't want to be content ID'd for something that's owned by LucasArts, John Williams, Fox, whoever might say, hey, this person didn't pay us for using it. Don't let them use it. So sorry about it. Just go dun, 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 dun in your head and you'll be fine. Anyway, this lays out the campaign in front of us. There are quite a number of missions in it, and each one of them is a linear mission, meaning one leads into the other, and there is no branching architecture or branching tree structure to the missions at all. With that out of the way, um, let me talk a little bit about the flight dynamics in this. Um, there are none. <laughs> this is totally 100% arcade there is no sliding slipping doing the uh, captain apollo maneuvers from battlestar galactica this is straight up world war ii style flying in space in other words unrealistic but fun as hell because you're in an x-wing well think of it this way they have inertial dampeners that reduce the g-forces that are on the person and there's enough thrust to turn it in the way it needs to go immediately does that make it any better for you? Um, not for me. But it is a fun, fun, fun game. First mission is very straightforward. You have a defecting um, Carillion Corvette. You have four freighters. And the freighters cannot be allowed to jump away to bring back the message to the Empire, the Imperials, that this Corvette has indeed defected. In the meantime, there's going to be a shuttle or transport that jumps in from Rebels that is going to board the Karelian Corvette to take control and then fly it out of there. So the Y-Wings have to protect that, and you're in the X-Wings, and essentially what you have to do is blow up the freighters, which are at varying distances, before they hyperspace out. First one goes down easy, second one goes down easy, and then I realize something. Look at my weapons. They are not recharging. This is one of the things I forgot. So because they're not recharging means that I am going to run out of energy in them real quick. And I find out later on that I think it's S is to balance the shields and F9, F10 are to change the recharge rates, which over there you see on the right, ELS, of the lasers and shields. Engines get automatically affected by increasing or decreasing. In other words, diverting power to shields, diverting power to engines from each one of those systems. Same thing with lasers, diverting power to lasers, diverting power to shields. At this point, there's absolutely no reason for me to have full shields, and I don't realize that. What I should be doing is diverting all of my energy from my lasers right now to my engines to get there faster so they don't jump away. But being that this is an early mission, I get away with it and uh, destroy them pretty quickly. So the game itself was fun. Fun enough to, well, make me love it. They do something different. There are real 3D graphics in this game. 
as opposed to the way that Chris Roberts did it. He wanted a much more visually accurate, high-fidelity game. So they did 2D sprites. I, that doesn't sound like it's more realistic, right? But the 2D sprites were able to have more detail on them, and essentially they drew them in many, many different angles that you would see as you flew around it, thus creating an illusion of 3D but still being 2D sprites. You can see that um, this is three years after Wing Commander, so there's been quite a bit of... Uh, quite a bit of technology that's happened in those three years. In the early days of gaming, it happened at a supersonic speed, the, the differences between A and B, you know, game A from 1990 and game B from 1991, 92, 93. So there was a lot of updates, but you could see the texture mapping on these 3Ds are, 3D objects are, well, they're, they're very, um, Today, you would look at this and be like, wow, what, is this a free game that I play on my iPad? But nonetheless, fun as hell. So this mission goes through and we kill all of the freighters, which, think about it this way, we're killing civilians, right? They're not military freighters. Gotta stop and have me some tea. All those Imperials sound like Brits anyway, so it makes me want to have tea. Why do the Brits always play the bad guys in every show? Why don't they get a guy with a German or a Russian accent? I guess they just sound so good at it, right? Oh boy, maybe it's from the Bond days, who knows. So we're going to get through this game pretty quickly. And the hardest part is flying the distance. And this is one of the things that I was talking about. If you look at it right now, I have my laser and shields set to maximum. Well, guess what that's doing? It's setting my engines to minimum, so my speed is 63. It'll take me forever to get to this freighter, and I don't realize this until the next mission when I'm playing in none other than the A-Wing. But we're not in the next mission yet. We're here. In just a few moments, I, I guess it's going to be a little bit more because I'm still two clicks out, or almost three clicks out, I'm going to be getting a mission successful message down where it's talking about laser cannons and proton, proton torpedoes. I didn't see it at first, and then when I did, I couldn't remember how to get back to the ship. And that, of course, is going to be the H key to hyperspace out of there. These things come back to me just a little bit after I actually do them. So let's get a little bit closer, and let's dispose of this guy and move ahead to see what the end of mission result screen looks like. Alright, so you can see I'm firing from afar, but one thing that's not happening is my cursor is not green, my targeting reticle. And you'll see it get, clean, you'll get green in just a few seconds, and I guess I should have let this go. But what you will start seeing is damage happening to the ship in front of me. Shields down, hull damage, boom, it's gone. And now there's nothing left. Freighter has been destroyed, we see. And let's see what happens next. There should be a successful mission. And I don't see it yet. Not yet. There it is. Engine set to full power. We're still waiting. And now, one of the things missing from this video is the beautiful music that is in the game. It's all the Star Wars score. So we didn't get that. I figured out after going left, right, back. It's not happening, is it? <laughs> Transport has have entered hyperspace. And that should be the end of it, right? Yeah, we just got it. I was clicking through it, trying to find out how to get back to where I was. And that's the mission successful message that we're looking for. So let me skip ahead from this to just about the end. So bumbling around and pressing keys to figure out how to end the mission is not something fun to look at. But you can see down below, good way it worked. The freighter convoy has been destroyed. And here I am still playing with keys trying to figure this out. And eventually we get to the point where I hit the H key. And that is going to be right over here. So yet another cut was put in there because there was actually a few minutes between that point and this point where I actually figure out what I have to do. Preparing for light speed, S-foils are closed position, 
and boom we go back and then we go into the cutscene of us coming out of hyperspace as foils unfolding and of course the cutscene to go back to the defiance from here it's just getting a little bit of our mission success well how hard could it be to shoot down some defenseless freighters right that corvette that we took was supposed to be protecting these well let's take a look at what we did okay 100 percent on the projectiles fired that's our proton torpedoes and let's move on to the next mission this one's more like a stealthy mission so if any of my star citizen fans are here this is something that you might be doing in your hornet s so the F7CS would be doing something like this. I think that's the Stealth Hornet, right? The Ghost Hornet? Well, if I'm wrong, please don't jump all over me. So on this mission, we got to fly out in the A-Wing. Now, the A-Wing was sh seen briefly, I think, in the Return of the Jedi, and it really wasn't explained. It's a high-speed interceptor armed with missiles and just the two lasers. It relies on speed and agility more than it relies on its weaponry. And it's really just made to intercept the TIE Advanced, which was a really fast TIE fighter, um, the one that Darth Vader was flying. So that's if you follow the lore of these games. Anyhow, what we have to do now is to outrun everything, try not to get hurt, and to identify everything that comes through this jump gate. It's one of those missions in the beginning that's very simple, and you'll get an idea that most of these missions are going to be simple in the beginning. And none of them really challenge your skill so much as they challenge your brain to figure out which one of the things to kill first or identify first and how to position yourself best to support the rest of the ships that you're protecting or part of in an attack. So you're going to get these messages on the bottom and they're going to be telling you what's going on. The one thing I want you to realize is this graphics, it's uh, pretty much a 2D overlay, right? You could turn on and off the cockpit at will and it doesn't change anything. But of course, having the outline of the cockpit is pretty cool, right? It gives you an idea of where everything belongs. And when that's not there, it's, it looks a little bit different. And I'm not going to turn it off for you here. So if you look at the mission countdown clock over on the right hand side of the display screen that's showing our target, that pretty much shows how much time is left in the mission, um, how much time you have to do this. So in this mission, I actually have the power settings down to a T. So if you look, I'm draining power from the laser, I'm increasing power to the engines and keeping power normal to the shields. That way I could hit speeds well over the um, speeds that we're, we were hitting in the other ship. I think at the very top you're going to see it says 460, but now I'm noticing down below it says 135. I think that's the speed of the ship that we're attacking. Not really sure. I thought the speed that we were going at was the 450 on top. You'll notice that the speed never changes. It's kind of funny because... You know, anytime you change your vector, you're changing your velocity, right? So I don't need my weapons, but I do need my shields, and they need to be rebalanced at some point, and I should be adding some more power to my shields, and I think I figure that out in just a few moments. As we come around and we look up, now we have three new Carillion Corvettes coming in, three kilometers and not that far. But it's not three kilometers from us all the times. A lot of times I find that it's three kilometers from the nav buoy and you might be six kilometers from there. So we have to fly towards them. I'm trying to figure out my shield rates and stuff, getting them going. And I really should be emptying my laser. You'll see I'm going 200 now. And at 200, the TIE Fighters could pretty much catch up to you. So let's balance the shields. Come on. Do I remember to do this? There goes our speed up to 112, 117. I think that's the power distribution over there. 
Right now we have full power to our engines, so all 600 are going to engines. We get that one. Oop! And see what happens when you don't have your shields set right? One of those turbo lasers did all that damage to us, blew out part of our panel, took out our shield system and our targeting system. So essentially we can't complete this mission until those things are corrected. So deflector shield is still down. It's going to tell us on the bottom how long that we have, if I can stop clicking buttons that is. And it's usually about a minute to get anything fixed. Of course you're not fixing it, your Archie unit is. Alright, we're able to target things again, and now we have to put full power to shields as soon as we can. Charging up our lasers a little bit so we could dump them to our engines. Okay, we got our unknown ship up ahead. And shield should be online just momentarily. Until then, I'm going to jink around, try to throw off their aim. They are computer AI from the early 90s, <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit easier than normal. I am hurt, though. Let's see what happens as we get closer. Those turbo lasers are getting close. As long as I just keep doing this. Oh, we were able to get him. Now we have to target the next one. We got him. And shields are coming back online little by little. So, let's turn around. War Sprite is gotten. And, oh, replay. Just to give you an idea, there are there is a replay camera in here. It doesn't save it in any kind of a format that you could push up to YouTube. I actually used the built-in software to my NVIDIA graphic card for this. But there is indeed a built-in recording system so you go by, back and watch some of your best missions. I just moved into the map and back out of it, by the way. So it's time to start playing with the shield levels. Come on, what am I doing here? Let's even them out and then let's start adding some power to them. There we go. Up, oh, not laser. Get out of laser. There we go, the shields. So now we're, yep, 400 power. That's about even. So we're pushing the shields up a little bit. Can't see our speed, but it's whatever it would be at that level. I think that's 100. And we're heading back into the fray. Going back towards the unknown corvettes, and we're going to get a reading on them and then jump out. So most missions are not like I said, this easy, but they do follow a similar path. You have to complete the mission to end. This one has 13 minutes left according to it, but I can guarantee you that this whole video will be over in less than three and a half minutes. I get this done quicker than what I used to back in the day. Biggest reason for that is that I remembered this mission and uh, pretty much remembered where to go and how to go. You can get a little bit out of place at times. And as long as you jink around, these Corvettes are not very accurate in the beginning of your missions. Later on, they can be very accurate in focusing fire in one direction and then, you know, very quickly you could be taken out. You know that things are going well because at this point the music score is really you know in a good happy way it's one of the ways to tell how you're doing and of course you can't hear the music here otherwise content ID'd and then there's no audio at all for this whole video so we should have all of them identified at this point there's one more okay so let's go back get him and I think that was the fourth Corvette that jumped in after the other three did. And I do get hit one or two more times, but no more damage. It's tough to tell. Alright, there we go. Let's just get a beam on him. Oh god, I might have been wrong at this point. And I apologize. There is actually... There we go. We've got our shields going to the rear. Oh... We got hit a couple of times like I said we would. Balance the shields, buddy. And then we pull around, 
We should be done at this point. Yeah, everything has been identified. And I think that's going to be the end of it. The next thing that happens... Oh, there's two WMB frigates. These are pretty big, so I got all of the Corvettes. If you remember, the Corvette was the second type of ship that we had to identify. The first one was one of these frigates. Now, essentially, there's a whole bunch of Corvettes. There's three frigates. Fighters flying around. There's faders, freighters fly, flying around the uh, map. And you're a sole A-wing fighter. Pretty much a tin can with the biggest engine you could put on it. So think an M50, <laughs> but faster. This is the fastest ship in the Rebel Alliance's fleet. And we get this one, and now we fly back towards the other one. And I think this will trigger a Star Destroyer. There it is, the Star Destroyer coming in. I think that's the Invincible. Is that what that is? Let's target him and see. I can't remember the names. The Invincible. <laughs> That's telling you, get the bejesus out of here. So our shields are coming back up a little bit higher. No way does this have the shield strength of the X-Wing or the Y-Wing. And definitely nothing has the shield strength of the B-Wing. That's the end of it. I hope you like my Lex Let's Play. And if you want to see more like this, be sure to comment below. I'm going to do a couple or more either way. I really like this game. I think the next one, however, will be the TIE Fighter series. So I want all of you to go out to goodoldgames.com. Take a look at this game. It is actually GOG.com. And you can purchase it for $10. And TIE Fighter that you will see later on will be $5. I appreciate you all watching and listening to my videos. Be sure to comment below and check the thumbs up button if you do like it. With that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon.